Hello, everybody. This is Tiffany with the Speak Up and Inspire series, and we are doing a special interview tonight with Miss Adrienne Charleston, talking about mental health and maintaining positive, healthy mental wellness during the COVID-19 and the safe at home orders. I know if you are like me, you are probably going crazy right at home. And I mean that literally. Um, <laughs> Being at home is you're supposed to be your haven, but right now it probably feels like a jail cell. And I know for me, dealing with depression and dealing with anxiety on an everyday basis or just a normal way of life for me, um, being at the safe at home orders or being inside after the first week, I was completely over it. Now we are going into yeah. our seven weeks here in my home and some people are actually been in the house longer than I am. So I thought it was really important for us to take time out to do this special um, sorry, this special interview with Miss Adrian tonight because so many people are dealing with anxiety. And even if your anxiety is not necessarily depression, anxiety is normal during this time that we are dealing with. Even our children are experiencing anxiety, stress depression and just going through the emotion, the different emotions that our, us as adults are going through because they are also home doing homeschooling right now. And for some, that could be pretty challenging. So this tonight, the special interview tonight is for everyone, your whole family. So if you're at home right now and you guys are just sitting around having family time, or maybe in separate rooms because you're tired of each other, <laughs> then everybody's <laughs> in one right now because we want to talk about mental health. We want to talk about self-care. We want to talk about how you can maintain mental wellness during the safe at home orders. So tonight we are going to be interviewing Miss Adrian Charleston, who was introduced to me by Jonathan Coleman, the founder of Blacktopia. He has been on our podcast two or three times already. He has done some videotaping for us. He is a very big supporter of the Speak Up and Inspire series. And so as soon as he told me that he had somebody for me, I made sure that I reached out to Miss Adrian because I knew she was going to be phenomenal, especially coming from Jonathan. So Miss Adrian, how are you doing tonight? Yes, I'm doing wonderful. How are you? I am doing good. I'm doing good. I um, had a very full day. The kids haven't drove me crazy today, so it's been a good day. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that sounds like a good day. <laughs> yes, a very good day. When we are all in here together 24 seven, it, it can get a little stressful. And I'm sure as a therapist, you are hearing that from your clients as well, that they're going through a lot of stress and anxiety right now. Yes, yes. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about you. Tell us who Miss Adrian is. Um. I'll, I'll, I'll try to keep it short. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I am, let's see who I am and what I do. I am actually an, um, an army veteran. I'm retired from the army. Um, <laughs> I am a licensed psychologist in the state of North Carolina. Um, let's see. I'm an author. I do poetry. Um, I am and do a lot of things. So, um, but what's most important to me was been my um, my dream and my goal is to help people and to, um, to 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 help them be okay with what they're doing, who they are, and where they are in life. So that's one of my main goals. So yeah, see, I shortened it. I didn't go in a whole bio like I started. Oh no, we've got an hour. We can talk all, all for a whole hour. We can fill it up. <laughs> and I can talk for a whole hour. <laughs> <laughs> great so you are a licensed psychologist so i probably took your credentials down a little bit when i said that you were just a counselor so you are a licensed psychologist so i apologize for that that is a big deal <laughs> all goes together because each to be a therapist you have to be licensed in some field mm -hmm. so yeah so it's good <laughs> good 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 i know how people feel about you know credentials and so forth so um as a psychologist, how long have you been a psychologist? Um, I got licensed in 2012, so eight years. It'll be eight this month. Eight years nice. this month. Okay. Yeah. Do you have a specialty with your practice, or 
Not really. I, um, I, I do a little bit of everything because I've done a little bit of everything and just my background being in the military. And then as I was working towards my degree, um, my master's level degree, I did a lot of um, community service. So I've worked with persistently mentally ill. I've worked with, um, with teens. I worked with children. I don't really leave that over there, but I will continue to work with teens and okay. adults. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I've done a lot. So, um, you know, depression, anxiety, bipolar, um, I'm, I'm, I'm getting more into trauma because that's what's coming to me more. And mm -hmm. sometimes I know people like to, um, especially with therapists, they want someone that has a specialty, but for me, I go off of, um, I, be, I believe that life in the universe sends you what it's time for. So right. there was a time I was like, I was not going to work with children. And the second place I got a job at was a, a play therapy child group. They hired me to work with uh, the adults, but they didn't have that many adults. So I worked with the teens and I was like, huh, teens are cool. And, um, <laughs> got another job and again I'm thinking I'm just gonna work with men and now I work with, work mostly with women so okay. in, in, in my mind I was going to do something and then the universe sent me to a different place to do something else and now and I was interested and I'll talk a little bit about um, transpersonal psychology I've been taking um, courses on that like I went to a whole retreat on it and everything and it what that does it 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 pulls together the mind, the body, and the spirit. So it's about spirituality. It's about um, the person as a whole, just mind, body, and spirit. And in that area, they deal with a lot of trauma. Mm -hmm. And I just took the classes because I was interested in that, because I do believe that the mind, body, and the spirit is all one and it affects you in all ways. So um, I took those courses and then I started getting clients with trauma because that is more of a trauma treatment. So that's why I say I don't, I don't say I'm in a category because whatever is supposed to come to me and the people that are supposed to see me will be the people that are supposed to see me. Right. So. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, sh I share that same um, belief. I'm actually working on my master's now to be a licensed uh, mental health counselor. So um, I'm definitely person centered. I'm definitely all about meeting people where they are. Mm -hmm. And so even though I have the things are uh, the, or should I say the populations that I would like to most work with, I prefer to meet people where they are. And if something else comes my way, then something else comes my way. <laughs> yeah, and, and I would say don't don't turn anything down until you, because we all have our barriers. Like we have people right. that we can't work with. We have types that we can't work with. Um, right. Mine is small children. I, I, I can't do small children. I can't do play therapy. None of that. It's a lot for me. <laughs> right, right. It is a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> So I know that that's what I can't do. So I don't do it. Even right. though I'm good with children and children love me, I don't know what it is. But <laughs> for me and my sanity, I don't do it. <laughs> right. And and that's that's something that we learn in in our training that if you, there's populations or a certain group that you just can't work with, then that's okay. <laughs> that is perfectly okay. Yeah. 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 Nice. So with. The new with the safe at home orders and the current pandemic that we're all experiencing, are you noticing that some of your more balanced and more, how should I say, I don't want to say healthy, but your clients that are more, mm, I can't figure out the word, that are usually bright and cheery are now starting to have some more anxiety. And are you noticing that your, your clients who suffer from the vet? depression or having more depression are you noticing a shift in your clients during this time yeah and it, it but it's it, it still stays with the anxiety more so than the depression um because <laughs> the funny thing is that sometimes people with depression prefer to be home anyway yeah. so right. <laughs> so some of them are good like they have right. but then they have the anxiety about their family members going out um being in public 
figuring out if um, they're going to continue to be paid, how their job is going to be, and if they're essential, how they're going to be safe. Um, it's a lot. And not only with clients, I have um, quite a few friends. I got some watching on my live right now. Hey, y'all. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. So, so we, we discuss, and just like you said, being, because one of the things that I don't think the world had thought about um, and that is coming, you know, coming to light is you can't work from home, homeschool, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And, and take care of everything in one place at the same time. So right. there, there was a reason that the children went out to school. There was a reason you went off to work, but now all of that is crashing down and the stress for a lot of people is, is weighing on them. They're finding that they, and not being able to leave. So they're finding that they can't get away from either situation because work is right there, kids are right here. Mm -hmm. And then people who have multiple generations in the home which is actually a lot, a lot more than most people know or understand that, you know, someone, you know, possibly our age, they'll have themselves, possibly a spouse, one or two children, and then a parent or two, that have, right. you know, so it's generations of being home and being together. And it should be a good thing, but it is, it can be anxiety provoking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At times. So, yeah. yeah, well, I know for myself, um, I'm, it's myself and then I have the twins and then I have my husband. So I, I tease my, my husband, but I'm very serious when I told him that I am so happy that he is able to still work outside the house <laughs> because it's already high anxiety with me trying to work from home because I'm still working my, my full-time job, mm -hmm. having those twins home, homeschooling them, and then dealing with the sibling rivalry all day <laughs> and yes. not being able to get away from it. And then having another person in the house full-time would have been probably more than I could have dealt with as far as me and my, my anxiety. I know my, my anxiety when it's starting to get high, I know when I'm starting to get depressed. Um, and so I'm thankful that he still has his job, but that he's working outside the house because I know that that would have been a lot for everybody, for all of us to be home all day. So I definitely understand that. Um, we've been blessed to both keep our jobs, but I know that there are um, families right now, a very good friend of mine, she lost her job and then her husband and his brother got laid off because they they're both bartenders and you know they work in the restaurant industry so all of them are home right now right um, so it's it's a lot going from everyone still working to having a household where everybody's laid off um I, I can't imagine being in that situation right right and 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 just the whole thing is is for, for people <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's just one of those things that we have to um find a way around it about it and figure it out because who knows what the new normal is going to be and right. you have to each person is going to have to figure it out for their family and their household and how they're going to work it because sitting and waiting for someone else to figure it out for you it's not going to happen like right. I, I literally watched a, this is kind of, it, it's on topic, but off topic. I watched a, a live today because I watched different lives and it was about business. And they were saying that um, a lot of people are probably going to have to learn or start becoming um, contractors, individual contractors, because mm -hmm. jobs are not doing, you know, certain things. So it's like individual contractor or opening your own business, figuring out what you can do, figuring out what your strengths are. And sometimes, you know, one of the best things in business is to have a team and right. what better team to have than your family. So if right. y'all are there and y'all can get it together once you get past some of the anxiety and the depression and everything else that's going on. And if y'all can mm -hmm. sit and make a plan together, mm -hmm. that would be awesome. Like right. that would be right. the that's best outcome. 
That's a good point. And we've been doing a business opportunity Fridays on the podcast um, the last three weeks, um, just talking about some other ways to bring in income to your family and how to start your, your own business with some of the companies that are offering those kind of opportunities. But just finding your niche and finding something that maybe you love that can also um, bring in income is definitely a good suggestion. It is. And, um, and I know you asked me the question when we started um, about um, helping with anxiety. Um, one of the things is, one of the first things, and you said it very well, how you said you can, you understand your body, you understand your cues, you can understand when certain things are going on with you. So you know when it's anxiety, you know when it's something else, you know when it's, you know, and everybody is not able to do that. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so if you feel, and, and, <laughs> Anxiety is is a funny thing. It it, it feels different for everybody. It does. So, yeah. So sometimes for some people, like one of the worst cases is you'll feel tightness in your chest. Your heart will hurt. You'll feel like you're having a heart attack. That's probably a panic attack. I'm not a doctor. Don't, if if you feel it, go to the hospital just in case it's a heart attack. Right. Mm -hmm. But (laughs) anxiety can feel like you can't breathe. It can be tightening in your chest. And it can feel like your your heart is about to jump out of your chest. Like right. it's a weird thing. Or it can be you just can't breathe. Your, your hands are sweaty. You um, feel, sometimes you feel a little paranoid. You feel like something is about to happen. It's like um, what they call an impending doom. Like mm-hmm. you feel something is going to happen to you right now, but right. you don't know what it is. Right. So that's another feeling of anxiety. And it, it can also feel like... Um, You've heard the saying that the walls are closing in on you, like you mm-hmm. feel like it's closing in. Mm-hmm. That's another feeling of anxiety. So, right. and and if you think of any more, you, you can go ahead and say it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, I was just listening to you because anxiety can come in different forms. A lot of times it comes in a physical form where we physically feel it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it can also, you know, for me, I, I feel very worn out. Like, I just want to just go to sleep. <laughs> um, I hibernate when I go into, when I'm, when I'm feeling depressed, I hibernate. That's me. Mm-hmm. But I know with anxiety, I do get the tight chest. But a lot of times I just feel spent. Like, I have no energy left. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, everybody definitely has different um, uh, ways that they, that their anxiety exhibits itself. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's one of those things that you are going to have to learn for yourself, like pay attention to your body, pay attention to what your, your body is saying to you, pay attention to what your mind is thinking, because a lot of times anxiety comes from what you're thinking and what you're right. um, putting into your mind. So, right. Right. <laughs> and, and, right. and that goes to, um, as I touch my face, um, <laughs> that goes into with with the COVID situation, sometimes the anxiety can be because you're watching too much TV. You're putting too much stuff in your mind that's causing you to feel like things are going to fall apart at any moment. Um, I I suggest, I always suggest a news break, social media break, um, limit your time. I mean, you know, except for this hour, because it's very important. Yeah. Um, (laughs) But, you know, limit your time on social media, limit your time watching the news, limit your time um, in the information that you're taking in about the situation. They're talking about it 24 seven and half of the stuff is repetitive. You probably only need yeah. one hour of news. Yeah, if that. So maybe true. 20, <laughs> yeah, maybe 20. Yeah, they'll, they'll play the same thing over and over again. <laughs> yes. And guess what? If you go on Facebook, you have friends like I have, you don't even have to watch the news. Right. That, for you. <laughs> that is true. That is true. It is right there for you. You just pull up Facebook, but oh, this is what happened today. Oh, okay. Yeah. Over here. <laughs> you know, and then you have all the news you need. You hit your social media points, you hit your, your news points, and you can log mm-hmm. off for the day and just go sit right. somewhere and chill. <laughs> <laughs> so so sometimes that is part of uh getting your anxiety down, especially with this COVID thing. And then um, another thing is trying, and I said trying because I know it's very difficult to find some alone time. Yes. Doesn't have to be a whole lot of time. Doesn't have to be 
a whole day, doesn't even have to be a whole hour. But if you can find a moment to yourself to take a bath, maybe, if you can do that alone, because, you know, life is crazy nowadays. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. so if you can, like, do that, or if you can, um, I have a friend, she, she uh, <laughs> I think she's still watching, I'm not going to say her name. <laughs> she will go in her closet mm-hmm. and just sit in her closet, sit yeah. on the floor in her closet. <laughs> so, I mean, if, if that's where you got to go to have that alone time, um, a very, one of my mentors and my sister, Miss Katrina, she talked to me, I believe it was last week or the week before. And she said, Tiffany, every morning I take about 15 minutes before I get started to just pray f- for my day. And then when I get home in the evening, she told me that she takes probably about 30 minutes to just deep, deep, you know, sit down and mm-hmm. just relax and to do absolutely nothing. Um, right. And so she gave me those suggestions because I was letting her know that, you know, my stress levels are, are high. So she shared those with me that she does. She takes time in the morning and the time in the evening to just, you know, get her thoughts together and have time to herself. Yeah, and it's, it's very important. It's something that something that people don't realize that just five minutes, like if you just get five minutes alone, like just ugh, give me these five minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And just breathe. You you can pray, you can meditate, you can do whatever feels good for you, but but don't worry about what's outside the, the door though no, don't don't do that That's- right right <laughs> this this time is for you so take yes. this time for you yes yeah, yeah. yeah. so yes. Now, are, are you seeing um is i'm gonna ask this question when you have you have adult clients and you have um young clients are you seeing that there's a difference in the anxiety with adults and kids <laughs> during this right now yeah kids are they're, they're on social media. Some of them are chilling. Some of them are like, oh, I just want to get out and see my friends. Like they're, yeah. they have no cares or worries <laughs> about yeah. much. It's, it's mainly the, uh, it's mainly the adults who are worried about the, the, the future. Cause right. you know, teens and kids, they're right here. Oh, right, right. now I can sit home. I can get on Zoom. I can do my schoolwork. I can talk to my friends, and yeah. you know, yeah, that's how they are. But the adults yeah. are more like, I don't even know what I'm gonna do with this kid today. <laughs> work tonight. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's you know, it's, it's it's a lot that they have to do. So so I I understand it. I mean, I don't have to do any of that, thankfully. Right. But <laughs> it's, it's it's a lot to to think about, and it's a lot of work, and it's a lot on um on parents because yeah. yeah who 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 would have ever imagined that they'd have to to homeschool and work from home and do all these other things and at the same time make sure people are fed make sure people are safe make sure you know they aren't going outside and well you can go outside in your front yard make sure y'all go outside Let me, i'm just gonna say that uh, it right, hadn't been right. warm enough. I don't know why. It was okay today. Felt like a nice fall day outside um, <laughs> instead of a spring day. I didn't but even I, ask you where you're where you're at. Where are you at right I'm, now? I'm in Raleigh. Okay, you're in Raleigh, so you're not too far away. Okay. Yes, not too far. Gotcha. Gotcha. But yes, yes. Get, get out. Get some of that sun when it's out. When it's not raining and when it's not 23 degrees. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. get out and soak in some sun in your area, your yard, and your front yard, or your backyard, wherever. Um, right. On the steps, where, wherever you live, just try to step out and away from people and just get some sun, let the sun hit your face, feel that energy. Um, you know, it helps Superman. It probably help us too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I've been noticing something in my neighborhood, and this might be something that your clients is doing, is that more people are exercising and that's one way for them to get out of the house going walking riding their bikes and so forth that was the one thing the safe at home order said that we can do outside Mm -hmm. is exercise so are you seeing an increase in that with your clients yeah well just in my neighborhood I see it um I don't know if my clients are getting out or not (laughs) 
uh, my neighbors are like because I, I sit in my room a lot and I look out my window because I'm one of those neighbors okay. um, but I've been seeing people I hadn't seen before like there's there's the normal people that mm-hmm. walk up and down the street and bike up and down the street and then there's mm-hmm. the different ones from different parts of the neighborhood I assume and right. they're walking and they got their kids on bikes and they're so everybody is it, they are getting out more on the nice days and and I, I believe it is a great thing because right. you you have to like you can't just stay in the house I know they say stay in the house but let let the sun hit you get the get the feeling of warmth on your skin and and sometimes it you know the sun makes you feel well it makes me feel better I don't know if it makes yeah. everybody feel better yeah <laughs> yes it's definitely recommended that everybody get at least 15 minutes of sunshine mm-hmm. a day um, I know uh, coming from being a school teacher, that was something that they stressed in, in the school environment is that kids need at least 15 minutes of sunshine. So I would definitely recommend that for everybody because being inside is not a good thing on a long-term basis. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And be safe about it. Don't, don't go out for party. Right. <laughs> go out in distance right. from people, other people. Right. Social distancing, six feet apart. (laughs) Yes. Yes. (laughs) Yes. What are you finding um, is helping reduce anxiety? What kind of things are helping to reduce anxiety and depression during this time? Um, Well, like I said, I recommend the distancing from the social distancing. (laughs) That can work so many ways. Social distancing Mm -hmm. from social media, Mm -hmm. (laughs) distancing from the news. uh what else getting some time alone finding your 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 space but everybody doesn't need that time alone so for the people and that's what i meant to say after that so there are people who um who live alone and they don't have any contact and for right. them i would say reach out to someone you can talk to reach out to friends reach out to family reach out to people who are uplifting not just anybody right because if you have a family member you argue with all the time, don't call them. Yeah. Don't <laughs> right. Don't even bother. Like this, <laughs> we're yeah. not gonna do this. But but reach out, um, find your community, and um, because people, different people, just like anxiety is different for for everybody. The way it is lessened is different for everybody. So yeah. you have the people who need their alone time, and that's probably more than likely the people who are surrounded by people. <laughs> yes. Who are surrounded by people who just need a minute and right. then you have the people who are energized by other people who are used to going out all the time who are used to probably hosting events who are used to just being you know the person but they live alone so the people that you know used to come to them and hang out with them are home dealing with their families and their stuff right. and they're you know at But sometimes these people don't reach out because they're thinking, oh, they don't care about me. When in actuality, they're just dealing with their stuff. Right. So I would say um, for the people who are alone and need that contact, reach out to people. Um, Start start a a chat group. Do a, um, you know, face-to-face group. Do some Zooms. Do, you know, I've been... um, I'm not one of those people who, who who need to be around people. However, like I said, I've been doing lives, learning new stuff, learning about business, um, just just strengthening my mind and all this other stuff. Um, and again, that it, these memes, man, I know I went all off topic. But <laughs> these memes, yeah. and you know, they come out if if you don't come out of this with 15 jobs and 10 side <laughs> hustles, what were you really doing? Some mm-hmm. people are just trying to live. Right, <laughs> right, yeah. So for, for, for some people, if you are surviving daily through this, and if that's what you can do, do that. Right. Then, you know, worry about building a business and doing all this other stuff as you can. Don't think that you have to live up to somebody else's expectation or level or be where they are. And then at the same time, that other meme talking about you find out who's really there for you in situations Mm -hmm. like this. No, you don't. You find out who you reach out. Who did you reach out to? Right. Right. (laughs) Right. So it's, it's, 
it's just conflicting information out there. Mm-hmm. I would say do what you need to do to help with your well-being. And you know, and if you don't know, you're gonna have to figure out what helps with your anxiety, what calms you, what um, makes you feel at ease. And, and, and it could be anything. Like for me, I'm getting some ICs delivered tomorrow. There's a, a, a mobile icy person in my area. He goes, okay. to I'm gonna put it in the comments too on your page. Okay. Um, so I text him today. I was like, yo, I need three quarts of my icy because guess what every weekend I eat that every Friday and Saturday night and it just <laughs> makes me <laughs> that sounds good it is it just makes me feel good it calms yeah. me I've had a you know long week uh don't have to get up as early you know mm-hmm. on Saturdays and Sundays although still got to get up with clients and stuff yeah. but not as early I start my days later on the weekend but it's it, it it's just helpful to have something and I'm not going to recommend eating be your something <laughs> because that could turn into something else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have oh, you seen, yeah. while we're talking about memes, there's the, the meme that my mom sent me where there's this, this thin shapely uh, woman who's looking in the refrigerator and this was day one of quarantine. And then day 30, she's just like this big plump <laughs> woman so <laughs> every time I go into the refrigerator or I eat something I think of that meme I'm like I'm already a thick girl I don't want to be <laughs> bigger by all this eating from being in the house all day but it tickled me when she sent it to me <laughs> oh good and, and and you know what that is a I mean you know that is what it is <laughs> it is what it is <laughs> as as they say the other meme that goes around when they said if you eat home more you lose weight and they somebody yeah. found out that that's a lie <laughs> <laughs> and well, we definitely that, we definitely are um saving money though because oh yeah my family yeah. we eat out a lot and so yes we are saving money right now so that's a good thing <laughs> yes and i found that i'm i'm saving as well so it's, yeah. I've, I've been saving during this because of um the no gas the no mm-hmm. eating out the no I'm re I'm getting re-energized because I'm not hanging out with friends like I normally do on the weekends. My weekends are for me. Right. <laughs> I love my friends. I'm sorry. Love y'all. <laughs> but I can stay home and not right. feel bad about I'm staying home. Right. So, <laughs> right. right. So it's done it's 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 changed um a lot for a lot of people. And um again, everybody's different in how they feel about it. Um, and I was going to ask, did you have any questions or anything specific from anybody that's watching? Nobody's asked questions on my page. They just keep watching. So Not, not that I can see. I'm seeing a, a whole lot of agreeing, like true and okay. yes and amen and good information. I don't see any questions. So we can go ahead and tell people if you have any questions, um, you want to ask Miss Adrian and maybe personal or just in general about dealing with anxiety and mental health, go ahead and post your questions. We'll make sure that we try to answer them while we're on live with Ms. Adrian. Yep. And if you ask, I'm going to answer in general, not personal. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. yes. Um, okay. So I have another question. And my question is, what about you know, we talked about anxiety and, you know, knowing your body, knowing you know, what triggers you and what your cues are. But what if there's someone who just can't get it together? Their their anxiety levels are off the charts and they just cannot bring it down. What are some suggestions or resources that you you, um, can kind of offer? Um, Get you a therapist. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Be a therapist. That is that is a good one. <laughs> yeah, that's probably the main thing because without knowing, because if it's off the charts, you can't control it. You don't know what's going on. You're right. gonna need someone to help guide you and to figure out what it is that's sending you over the chart. Um, I would say therapist before medication, just because yeah. it it could be um, helped and managed through talk therapy or, you know, meditation therapy, depending on the, what you like and what people, you know, who you choose and what they do. Um, it's, it's one of those things, again, that is very specific to you. But mm-hmm. I always say start with therapy 
before going to the medication because if your therapist thinks that you need medication they'll send you for some medication right <laughs> get right. somebody for you quickly right <laughs> Right. That is good. Um, so yes, definitely. If you are having a hard time, there is assistance out there. I know um, with North Carolina, if you call their, um, their line, they have a hotline right now for people who are experiencing high anxiety and high stress levels who just need to talk to someone. Mm -hmm. So, and I know that it's, it's um, a therapist and interns and so forth that are supposed to be answering these phone calls. So I do know that's a resource from North Carolina. Um, I'm hoping that other states are also following suit with that because some people who might not have known that they had anxiety issues or maybe did not might be experiencing it now or people who have been depressed in the past who were able to manage it like I have been might find that it's becoming a little bit more difficult to manage. So I do know that's one of the resources North Carolina is offering, and I'm hoping that other states are um, offering that as well. Yeah, and um, and I'm not real sure because I've been just working, <laughs> which mm -hmm. is a great thing. So um, I've just been trying to keep myself on track. But right. um, I will say when you when you reach out, um, find find you someone that's a match for you. Find someone that is. Um, good for you. And I know a lot of people, I don't know if I'm gonna step on toes. A lot of people say, you know, pray. You can do that and find a therapist. Yes. We're, we're made Amen. for a reason. We're here for a reason. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we were made to help you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So do all of that. Right. Um, and if you have friends, I know a lot of people say they want to talk to their friends, but if you feel that your friends are causing you more anxiety than, than, then calmness, stop talking to that friend, at least about that, and, and reach out and find you a professional. Um, I do know some very great life coaches as well. So some like life coaches are able to help with, um, you know, goal-oriented goal things to, to help you focus, solution-focused stuff to push you forward. Um, not necessarily, you know, it's not necessarily therapy, but sometimes right. it can be a little cheaper than getting a therapist if you don't have insurance or other means to pay for it, so. Right, that, that's a good point. Um, I know several life coaches and they said that they have, um, in their clientele has increased because people are reaching out mm -hmm. knowing that they are life coaches. So that's definitely um, another step. Um, I wanna talk a little bit briefly about domestic violence. Um, I'm a domestic violence advocate. And um, so we are noticing in our world, our advocacy world, that the domestic violence rates are going up. Um, and I'm sure you can shed, shed some light on why you think that is. Um, but some of the reasons are is that people are home together now. They're spending all day together. And that goes back to those anxiety and those stress levels are going up and now they're having to deal with each other 24 seven. And so the domestic violence rates are going up. Um, do you, have you found that you, are you having to deal with that in your world? Is that something that you're having to deal with more? Not with my clients specifically, but I've had a call, <laughs> I've had a call from a friend of a friend of a friend who mm -hmm. did not want to be named, so. <laughs> Yeah. So one person was asking me questions and relaying it to the other person. And, yeah. and and they were just like, you know, they were just having a hard time and they didn't know if they should go home after work and mm -hmm. how it was going to be because, you know, the, the spouse lost a job. Mm -hmm. They're still out working. They have to come home to who knows what or what, you know, if they're going to get hit when they walk in the door, how it's going to be. And um it's, it's just, it's, it's disheartening. Um, however, it, it's, the light is being shown on it more and it needs to be shown more so people can take it more seriously. But right. at the same time, I wish people did not have to go through it. Right. And, right. and for, for her, I, this person, I was like, tell your friend, <laughs> tell your friend to tell your friend that, uh, yeah, they need to, to not go home, need to get out of that situation and get that person, because that person sounded, the spouse sounded like they were 
possibly having a psychotic um, episode. And mm-hmm. I was like, you need to get them to a facility before right. you go back to that house. So, right. and, and that's the other thing, people are dealing with unresolved trauma, untreated mm-hmm. men, underlying mental health issues. Um, mm-hmm. And a lot of those things are being reared as they're sitting home alone, because a lot of times you can mask those things. So yeah. even if you have somebody that you live with and they're home all the time, mm-hmm. now that you're there, you've dis- disrupted their world. So right. different things are going to come out. You're going to see see how things are changed and you can actually see this person for who they are because mm-hmm. you hadn't seen who they are because we're out in the world most right. of the day, all right. day. You get home enough, enough time to eat, kiss your kids, go to bed. Right. Like that's it. Right. So right. getting to, to, to learn these people and know these people that you live with is a must, but then finding out the underlying issues they have you're going to have to help them get some help. Right. So right. you can be okay because that's going to weigh on the person and, you know, everybody in the house. Right. So. That's true. That's true. Um, I'm glad you brought up that part about, you know, learning people now as you're being confined in, in one space together. Um, I think that might be, that could be really challenging, especially for maybe new couples or newly married couples or, you know, just people being in each other's space for long periods of time, you all, you're going to find out things about each other. So, um, and unfortunately that spending all this extra time and then losing jobs and losing incomes and so, so forth and so on is causing those domestic violence rates to go up. But even without the violence, you're still you're still spending a, a, a great amount of time with, pe- with people now that before y'all were gone all day, just like you said, and now you're home all day in each other's space. So that definitely makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And you just got to learn each other. Like, you know, your spouse, learn who they are. You married them for a reason. You're, you're, <laughs> you're living, I mean, I'm just saying, you're living yeah. boyfriend, girlfriend. You, you, yeah. Yeah. You live with them for a reason. Your, your kids, I'm assuming you had them for a reason. Like, <laughs> get get to know them. They're they're little individuals. Like you have to learn them, know them. People with teens, like that's gonna be extra hard. But try to get to know them. <laughs> <laughs> what are they interested in? What do they like to do? Right. See yeah. if you can, you know. See what you can find out about the person in the room that never comes out and always had on, have on headphones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or like my kids who can sit on YouTube all day, all, all day, every day, listening mm-hmm. to people play games, which just really baffles me still. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you're going to have to learn one or two of those games so you can talk to them about them. Yeah. Yeah, you got a point. That, that's true. That's true. So this is a personal question. What are you doing or what is working for you to keep you in a good mental space? Um, I'm, I, I try to, my, my base level is happy. Okay. So I, I live at a, which is why I smile and laugh all the time. Like this, mm-hmm. is, this is normally me. Even, <laughs> even if I'm mad, upset, anything stressed out whatever I'm laughing I'm smiling that's Mm -hmm. just that's just my baseline um and and I've taught myself that um you know no reason to to sweat over stuff that that you can't do anything about you can only live in your perception you can only do what you can do within your realm of what you can do and um and long as I know that I'm doing my best at what I can do I'm okay with that and it keeps me keeps me level kind of yeah yeah <laughs> it's taking yeah. a lot of work this is not not something that I I just uh I just did overnight I did right. it actually oh can I do a plug sure okay <laughs> so I was going through and and this is kind of um I was gonna do my live on this on Monday um so I'm not gonna say too much but um this is kind of like my process so I had I got I had a divorce eight years ago, eight years ago. Um, And this is kind of the process that I I went through to find myself, to find out where I am, to find my my happy level. And then so 
I was like, wow, I actually did a process. Maybe I should write this process down. Okay. So I did. And I came up with the whole book. Okay. <laughs> yes, I saw you're an author. <laughs> yes. So this is, I know it's a little, yeah. So this is Finding Your Flow, A okay. Butterfly's Secret to Happiness. Ooh. And it is a workbook on happiness. So okay. it, it, it takes you through the ups and downs because you have to ask yourself these hard questions um, mm-hmm. to figure out who you are, where you are, and where you want to be. And those right. are the questions that a lot of people don't ask themselves. They just like, I want to do this and this is where I want to be. Right. Mm, where are you now? Right. How are you where you are now? Mm-hmm. How are you going to be moving forward? And also how are the people around you going to react to you moving forward? And it's it's all in here. You have to write, you have to think, you have to you have to work it because it is your life. And if that's where you want to be, you have to work through, do, do the work for yourself. So I did it for myself and I find that um, I'm better for it. And so I, I want to help other people do the same. So I do that with my individual therapy. Um, I have it in my book. I have some workshops. I'm going to have to um, get them online, do some webinars and stuff to get the workshops mm-hmm. out to people, but that's coming soon this month. Um, I have a, um, a saying that I just made up today. I need to have it done before 48 and I'll be 48 the 27th. So, okay. <laughs> so instead of the first 48, 48. before 40, yes. <laughs> no, no way. Yes. So that's why I mess with people with, with kids. I have a, I have a son, but he's 20, uh-huh. he's 27. So okay. I have a okay. grown man. So I mess with people with kids because I'm like, I'm done. Like, this yeah, is- you're done. You've done your parenting. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But yes, I'm, I'm, yeah. I retired from the army 20 years. That's, you know, that already put me up sometime, but then I had to go to school get licensed, do all. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're happy. It's, it's has you looking young. Yes. <laughs> young, I, I would have never guessed 47. Never. Yes. So my happy drinking lots of water and dancing. It'll keep you okay. young. Those are my three. Okay. <laughs> I like it. Yes. Yes. Good. Good. Well, I know that um, today I was listening to um, the radio show and their question this morning was, what is the one thing that people are missing the most? So I'm going to ask you that. What is the one thing that you are missing the most with all of this going on? And then I'll share some of the answers that I heard. Probably um, physical contact. Yes. And, and, yes. I, and I just say that because we, um, around here, we have poetry on Wednesdays mm-hmm. and you walk through the door, you are hugging at least 50 people. Yes. <laughs> yes. In one night. A good like, hug will go a long way right now. Yes. So every, like they have a, uh, we have a chat in a Facebook chat and people are just like, I miss hugs. Like I can't yeah. wait to hug you all again. Like, right. you don't know what, you know, I have, I have, one this one friend and he he can envelop your whole body and he just takes <laughs> me and hugs me and I just lay there like this. <laughs> that sounds like a great hug. <laughs> it is. So and, and I think that's it from physical physical touch, just hugs, you know. Yeah. Get it in there. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, one of the the number one things was um, f- getting with family, fam- family gatherings. That was the, the number one on a lot of people's lists because, you know, my mom, she's uh, 73, 74. And because she's a senior, we've been limiting our contact with her because we want to make sure that she stays safe. Right. So we've been doing Zoom meetings, but that's not the same as seeing my mom and holding my mom and hugging my mom. So um, the number one answer was definitely um, face-to-face and family gatherings, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and my mom, yeah. I don't even think I could get her on a Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> it took a moment for me to get my mom on, so I totally understand. <laughs> She's got it now. She's Zooming me now. <laughs> I'm going to have to look into that. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> 
yeah but same here we have to stay away from each other and you right. know all that and then because in my household it's um my, me and my son and he um he still works on the outside okay. so okay. we just be careful you know I'm like people don't need to come over you know I don't have to tell him that because yeah. neither one of us like company but right. uh, <laughs> <laughs> so both of y'all are introverts <laughs> He is a complete introvert. I'm an okay. introvert ex extrovert. Like okay, I, have to, got it. I have to introvert to, to gain regain my energy, but I I relish in being out and about. I like talking to people, I like sharing, but mm -hmm. when I'm done, you're done. <laughs> yes, yes. The wall <laughs> comes up, I gotta go and go sit down in my closet and <laughs> and breathe. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay, so we have a few minutes left. So I just want to do um, a recap so that those who have come on since, because we, we have several people watching and some new people. So let's talk about the, the, the suggestions again for, um, you know, just, just staying sane through this whole thing. We talked about, um, you know, making time for yourself, even if it's just a couple of minutes, make the time for yourself to have alone time. Um, you know, exercising, getting sunshine, um, reaching out to friends and family that are positive influences, not the one that you argue with all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, knowing what your cues are, um, just, just taking time to, to relax. What are, some, what are some other things, what are some other suggestions that, you know, we talked about or maybe something you're just thinking that we can help people to start thinking about to reduce their anxiety? Um. Asking people how they're feeling. Just call. I have a. I had a friend. Um, they're watching now on my page. Uh, I'm not gonna call their name. Um, <laughs> they called me today and they were like, they were just going through their phone and going through their call list and they were just gonna call, you know, a few people in their phone a day and oh, just check up one. on people just to to see how they're doing. And and at the same time, if you're not doing okay don't assume that people don't care they just don't know so right. reach out and say you can can i talk to you for a minute do you have an ear is there anything you know that you can share with me i'm having a little hard time with this and guess what what mm -hmm. you probably get on the other end is man i am too i've been looking for somebody to talk to like you you have yeah. to reach out instead of sitting there thinking that nobody cares about you but again people are in their own space and they're mm -hmm. dealing with their own stuff and sometimes you just call in to just talk about anything probably a break from what they're doing so right right <laughs> so if you're if you're feeling away call someone talk to them see how they're doing and then you might find out that you're not alone because you're not alone and right. all of this stuff you are not alone we're all dealing with it in a it, everybody's dealing with it in a different way but we're all dealing with it so right right yeah. Um, we we truly are in this together. This is not a North Carolina thing. It's not a South South Carolina thing. This is a national thing that everybody is going through. So yes. everybody is being affected right now. So she, you, she made Miss Adrian made a very good point that if you are in a bad place, a low place, reach out to mm -hmm. family, friends, pray, um, you know, Get check in on people so forth and so on. And at the very, you know, if you need to, if those things do not help you with your anxiety, you can always reach out to a counselor, a therapist, a psychologist, um, a professional that is trained to help you with learning some tools and some coping strategies for reducing um, your anxiety and your depression. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. I'm trying to think, do I want to, so, um, as we already said, I'm a psychologist in the state of North Carolina. So if you would um, like to see me, I'm here. Um, <laughs> we were, I was just about to get to that. Tell people how they can find you. Okay. And that's only in the state of North Carolina for psychology. However, I do life coaching for people out of the state, which is different okay. from therapy. And I know the difference. Life coaching is very solution focused. Therapy yeah. is we're going to work on some deeper stuff. So right. that's the difference. Don't think you're going to get me for life coaching and think I'm going to give you some therapy. <laughs> two different things, two different yes. things. <laughs> and I'm going to draw the line. Um, right. You can find me at my website, www.adrian-charleston.com. 
Um, I am also Googleable uh, under Adrian <laughs> Charleston or Butterfly Flow. Um, so the book I, I showed you, Finding Your Flow, is on my website under Finding Your Flow. And I do have two other books, a poetry book and a journal that's under um, Butterfly Flow. So you can find a lot about me on my website. And again, it's just www.adrian-charleston.com. Or you can follow me on IG at Butterfly Flow Life. <laughs> and uh, if you have more questions, you can email me at butterflyflowlife at gmail.com. So I'm yeah. very easy to find. Butterfly flow and you'll find me. <laughs> yeah. And I love that name because my organization is Butterfly Visions Project. So as soon as oh, I saw that. the butterfly, I was like, yay. <laughs> oh, we're connected. <laughs> we are, sis. We are definitely connected. Yes. And on um, my live on Monday, I'm doing a live on my page. I'm going okay. to um, talk about, uh, we'll tell, remind people again why I chose the butterfly and how it relates to the to the COVID situation and why that that's a great well to me it's a great symbol, but uh, <laughs> right to me so, too <laughs> yeah so tune in if you can I do that at six on my page so okay good good is it um are your lives public for those yeah. who are not friends with you okay good mm -hmm. yeah okay good all right so tell us about your book again because I I definitely want to get one myself so tell us about <laughs> your book again. So that this people is, can see it and know where to get it. It's Finding Your Flow, mm -hmm. A Butterfly's Secret to Happiness. Ooh, um, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yes, you can find it on my website, www.adrian-charleston.com. And I made sure I put my whole name on the page so y'all can know how to spell it. It's a long name. I know. Okay. Um, <laughs> but that's me. And you can find everything about me, and everything you need. And if you want to contact me, the, um, I have a contact page. You can just send me some messages and, um, we can go from there. And, Good. um, and for, for therapy, you can hit me up for life coaching. You can hit me up. If I can't help you for life coaching, I have three life coaches that I refer people out to. So mm -hmm. it's not just me. It's, you know, it's a team. We all work together and it's, it's good to, to be able to help people. Good. Good. Well, thank you, Miss Adrian, for your time. And thank you, Mr. Jonathan. I know he's been watching the whole time. So thank oh, hey, you Jay. for supporting. Um, I want to tell you, um, again, thank you for taking time out to do this with us. Um, it's very important that people are have the resources and that they have the information to be able to stay um, healthy um, in a good mental state not just mm -hmm. mental, but emotionally, physically, spiritually. Yes. Um, so thank you for taking time out with us to talk about this. And for everybody, have a great night. Thank you again. Y'all have a good one. Bye.